Close your eyes for a moment and think about how you would feel if you dipped your burnt finger in cold water. This is the story of Way of Peace. To fully comprehend this story, you need to understand a little bit about the history of Kenya. For decades, Kenya has been known as an island of peace. She has hosted thousands of refugees and even those seeking political asylum. With the advent of the multi-party system in 1991, the country started experiencing political turmoil from an ethnic angle. The conflicts were however localized within a few geographical areas. The country managed to push forward within a very delicate balance of ruined inter-ethnic relationships. In 2007, after the highly contested presidential elections, this state escalated to many parts of the nation and the country could no longer hold together. This resulted in a full-blown and widespread conflict where death, displacement and destruction of property occurred, leaving many hearts wounded. It is at this point that a team of individuals who had witnessed this conflict was brought together in a forum that would be the birthing ground of the Way of Peace. Way of Peace was formed uh, in 2008. That's when we started our work. And uh, this was through the aid of the Anglican Church of Kenya, the Mother's Department. This is a time when uh, the country was struggling with um, a lot of woundedness emanating from the post-election violence. So churches alike were in a quagmire and uh, not sure of uh, what to do. And uh, an organization from Rwanda approached the Anglican Church, the Mother's Union Department, and uh, that's how we, we were trained as the very first people to experience uh, that uh, process of healing. An Anglican friend of mine who was working with the Anglican Church in many other countries abroad, was a, uh, he was a prayer supporter and after the post-election violence in Kenya in 2007-2008, he spoke to the Anglican Church there and said, you need to invite this ministry uh, into Kenya. And so my colleague Joseph from Rwanda came in and met with um, a group of Anglicans. But the ones who responded was the Mother's Union. They are the ones who said, if you give us this, this, this work, if you train us, we will run with this throughout, throughout this nation. Uh, I've been involved in the Ministry of Healing and Reconciliation after the genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda since 97. And uh, my work has been to train leaders and to help them, first of all, experience healing for themselves and also to train them to lead uh, healing and reconciliation events in their churches, but also communities. We have been invited by uh, ACK, the province of the Anglican Church of Kenya, to come and help. So we landed in Naivasha, where people were brought from different communities that were very affected by PEV and uh, that is the time where we help uh, especially women leaders and, and others to first of all experience healing but later we train them uh, to use the same approach and into their, their churches and communities. From the beginning, although there was a great fear initially, it was very tense. The beginning of the workshop was very, very tense. Um, but from, from there we saw God working and we saw amazing healing and wonderful reconciliation taking place after three days. And some of the people who were trained uh, at the beginning became what we now know as a way of peace. So I've been still accompanying them in the process of training other people and uh, becoming more effective in the work of healing and reconciliation. There are three programs at Way of Peace. The first one is healing and reconciliation. This is where we conduct uh, workshops, healing and reconciliation workshops, then uh, followed by a follow-up, which uh, aims at uh, trying to get the impact of the workshop, the healing and reconciliation workshop. Then we have uh, another program we call debriefing. 
debriefing is where ministry workers or people get a conducive environment to be able to pour out because uh, as reconciliation workers and ministry workers, you get to hear a lot of stories of pain of other people. And also through your own experiences, you go through uh, very painful and uh, uh, bad experiences that you need somebody trusted, somebody you can be able to share with, to pour out your heart so that they don't overwhelm you. So that is the ministry of debriefing. And finally, we have the community development because we say after uh, reconciliation, what next? We need to go ahead. We, want, we need to work out uh, solutions because uh, if people don't have something to keep themselves busy, then it is very easy to revert back to conflict. So community development uh, uh, aims to, to make uh, people busy and to make sure they have a source of income, something uh, to work with and to work on so that they don't go back again to conflict. Uh, because a lot of conflicts are due to maybe resources. So if you empower people and you make sure that they have something they are working on, that one keeps them busy and helps them uh, not revert back to conflict. I think our, our, our approach has been a very slow one, a unique one, but a very consistent one. Because we, 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 we focus on the healing of the inner wounds. <clears throat> and the peace that comes from a healed heart is normally a sustainable peace, almost permanent. Because uh, peace uh, of, of any form that is not from a changed heart and mind uh, always tends to, to, to slip back. And therefore, we must say we, we thank God because we, since 2008, we have seen a, a continuous progress towards uh, healing and uh, citizen respons uh, the responsibility of citizens towards a peaceful and a cohesive nation. From the very beginning, the mission of WAPE was clear. To facilitate the healing process for many who were in serious inner wounding, the motivation was to see as many hurting people receive a similar relief and healing as the one the pioneering team had already received. Over the years, a lot has been achieved in various parts of Kenya. Many have received healing, broken relationships have been restored, and churches and individuals have been empowered to be agents of hope and reconciliation in their communities. This has resulted in a relatively stable nation politically. But what exactly does it take to go into a community and have a breakthrough in engaging with them fully? Unaenda pale ukitaka jamii hii na jamii hii kwa sababu ni mpakani wa kuje pamoja. Lakini unapofika pale unakuta hata within one community bado kuna migongano ndani yao na unakuta not only the, the community alone even in at church level unakuta bado kuna migongano na hata katika familia kwanza unachukulia historia ya eneo fulani kama njoro unaangalia mwaka wa 2007 what actually happened what was the root cause of the conflict then working on that it gives you a direction or it gives you an, a strategy on how to get into that place area yangu Sana sana area yangu ni Mount Elgon. Hapo ndio nimekaa for almost 4 years. Na ni area ambayo hakuna kabila hakuna pale. Ingawa kuna wale wengi na kuna wale wachache lakini wote wako pale. So unapohudumu pale unakuta kuna mawazo tofauti, kuna mirengo tofauti ya kikabila, ni kazi ambayo inahitaji hekima nyingi na neema ya Mungu ili hisia zako uzifinye ndani na hao wawili ama watatu wote walete pamoja kitu ya kwanza sisi ni kutangaza mambo ya amani na hatuwezi kuwa na uhakika ya kwamba ingawa tumetangaza mambo ya amani vurugu haiwezi tokea vurugu inaweza tokea lakini kwa kiasi e, ile ile amani ambao tutakuwa tumesambaza wakati mwingi inachangia kuridius kupunguza kupunguza hali ambayo ingekuwa ni mbaya zaidi
One of the most monumental moments for any nation is when there is a change in its topmost leadership position, and Kenya is no different. With the history of Kenya, Way of Peace intended to be effective in its approach to the 2022 election, and that meant that much had to be done if any lasting change was to be experienced. The elections 2022 were a bit peculiar, and uh, but I, I must say we have never broken our chain of our involvement in the peace work since 2008. We have been very consistent in and out of the elections. Because also when you, you focus uh, peace work during election, there are many other noises, there are many other uh, interrupters. But uh, in between the elections, that's the time that uh, it's most efficient, especially in addressing the whole issue of healing. And so <clears throat> this being a very peculiar election because this was actually the, the, the end of one president, uh, the 10 years term, and there was definitely going to be a new president because one government has finished its term. And therefore it meant quite a lot of challenge. But um, I have also seen uh, quite a spirited effort, even from actors that did not participate in peacekeeping and calling for national cohesion previously. The church came in very strong, which is our church is one of our main, uh, our main collaborator. It came out very strong. The government came out very strong. The um, NGO and other uh, civil society came out very strong. And so Though the, the efforts were not uh, kind of uh, harmonized, each one was playing a role uh, in, 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 in towards one goal. Uh, katika elections ambazo zimepita, hakujawai kuwa na hali ya maombi, hali ya juu, ambayo ya metendeka 2022 ukilinganisha na miaka zengine. Kila sehemu nilio tembe unapate ya kwamba makundi ya wahubiri wachungaji, wanafunga na kuomba. Sehemu nyingi nyingi, watu wanatokea mabarabarani, wakifanya peace walk, tofauti sana, tofauti na miaka zingine. We were going into the elections with the knowledge of what has always happened during elections or after elections, where people revert to conflict, where people uh, wound each other. So we felt this year, uh, uh, in the run to the general elections, we needed to really focus on the healing and reconciliation to make sure that people don't go back again to conflict. We were fearing that there would be a repeat of what had happened in 2007. But now we were lucky because we, had, we were not starting from nowhere. We had at least a team people who had actually owned the process of keeping peace. Of course, campaigns are wakati huu zilianza mapema, lakini wakati muda ulisonga, ikakuwa ni vigumu sasa kufanya the normal works, zenye tunafanya siku tatu. Na hapo ndio tukawa na wazo, hata tukawa tumetiwa moyo kutoka kwa ofisi ya way of peace, ya kwamba tufikirie njia mbadala ya kufikia watu. So tukapata hiyo nafasi ya kufanya mikutano, ya siku moja ambayo tuliweza kuipangilia. So tukawa na forums, tukawa na vikundi vya wachungaji, tukawa na vikundi vya uh, aspirants wenye wanataka viti na tukawa na vikundi vya vya administration wazee wa mita, mikasa na hata chiefs. Now looking at what had happened in 2007 and looking at it critically trying to look on what we could have done better that time to avoid the conflict. And using those, those facts, uh, we, we tried to, ne to negotiate and speak openly about the root causes and how we could do things in a better way, how we could bring the church on board, how we could bring the administration, uh, politicians vying for different 
positions from different political parties and people had a chance of sharing on their fears, on their expectations, on how we could do things better and agreement and making declarations. From experience of, uh, of the many elections, it's also important to, to focus where the, where the greatest uh, responsibility lies. We have uh, previously tried to reach politicians, but uh, because politics is about interest, so you find in many cases, uh, if violence will propel me to power, then nothing can come in between me and, the, and violence. It is that instrument of violence that we were more focused on this time round, and that is the voter and particularly the, the youth. But that not to say that we did not reach out to the politicians. We also held forums, especially at the, the world level. We would have a, a forum of all MCA, that is a member of county assembly aspirants, come together and uh, make a vow that uh, I lose fairly, I respect that. If there is any problem, I go to court. And uh, at no one time that I will influence uh, the electorate into violence. And that was in the presence of church leader and uh, other community uh, key stakeholders. So by making that vow, most of them were bound by their own vow. So tukafanya hizo forums na pia tukafanya uh, peace caravan ambayo tulifanya kwa kuleta area moja ni kama sub county tukawa tumepanga peace caravan kupitia kwa administration na ikawa tumeshikana wachungaji wote na hata viongozi wa dini ya Kiislamu na tukaweza kutembea kutoka center moja hadi nyingine Tuki, tukiambia watu wa waweke amani vita tusitumike wazazi wetu hakuna siku wataenda kupigana ila ni sisi tunaenda kupigana na kuchochea kwa hivyo vijana tusitumike vibaya tutumike kwa kulima kwa kufanya biashara ndogo ndogo na zitatusaidia wote ni mandugu madada kwa kabila atujalishi kabila gani Jumara ya mwisho nikiuliza wewe ukisema uko yako gani utasema ya Adam huyu mwingine atasema Adam inamaanisha sisi wote ni uko ngapi moja moja hakuna mwingine so today we are gathered here to mark and to send a signal of peace especially in this year of the elections the area uh, residents and all of us as a government uh, security agents our motto is one and our call to everyone is one, that this is the way to go. That no one needs to, to hate his own brother because of the elections. And uh, as a government representative, I want also to join them and say that this is the way to go. And I want to appreciate everyone who has come on board and ask everyone else to join this uh, wagon so that together we move on way of peace, uh, we, 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 we must say this, this time round, we put our best foot forward. We involve the youth more than the previous elections. The youth uh, work was quite uh, pronounced and quite elaborate. And uh, this, uh, I must say, uh, bore fruit.
the way of peace has uh, a department they call uh, the youth's program. So the Father's Art has been under the youth's program. Uh, Father's Art was initiated in 2016 after Way of Peace uh, saw it well to bring together worship leaders and uh, musicians uh, within Nakuru town uh, who came together to uh, go through a workshop of healing and reconciliation. And uh, immediately after that uh, workshop, we also went through uh, another workshop for worship. It was a worship workshop, learning the heart of worship, which was uh, taken uh, through uh, by Dave Bankhead. And uh, so immediately after we went through the workshops, the group came to be, and uh, we started making music. We actually did our first album in 2016. I speak to the heart of Kenya, our motherland. For so long, our bond has been punctured and wounded, forgetting unity and forsaking brotherhood, overlooking love. And they've been using the way of peace to reach out to mostly young people, but uh, they've, they've also been used to reach out to other people whom uh, the message of healing and reconciliation would really go in well using arts. So uh, during that period, uh, Father Zat has gone to develop into an arts, performing arts group, which uh, has several arts, which include music, uh, poetry, dance, drama, and even fine art. The Father's Heart Ministry team has gone ahead to produce more artistic pieces, including a musical play and a second album that have been displayed both on theater stages and online platforms like YouTube. A quick search on the platform will take you to a space that not only inspires hope, but also gives you entertainment that is up to standard. Watch at a distance before whom deny three times. How can I explain to the giver of life it in life? Time identity angu bad on I doubt you miss him really, especially ko I gym you give a fake smile, you I live ki life like and that ain't Christ like. The team has gone a long way to making sure that their voice is heard by their peers, the nation, and the world at large. When you look at, uh, at uh, the big junk of people or uh, who is usually involved in uh, doing things that are negative during the elections period, mostly it is the young people who get used. So our focus is to the young people using a way in which they can actually you, we can actually penetrate them. If you want to go to the young people, you're going to, you don't go directly to them through sermons. But if you go to them through something they like, things that are artistic, you actually get to them since, uh, since uh, you're using the best medium to actually preach the message. In social gatherings, the rich who are always the guests of honor will come with flowers on their necks without even thinking of that poor citizen who is there waiting to die so flowers can be placed on their graves. See, that's the culture where we were born. That's the culture where we have lived in. That's the culture where we are at today. But the good news is that you can change the situation. It all starts with me and you. This country is uh, almost 70% uh, youth, depending on how you define uh, a youth. But uh, it's largely youthful nation. And so the youth have a voice. If they, they decide the West, this country moves West. If they decide the East, this country moves East, South or North, whichever way. So uh, for an agenda to go through, youth participation is key. 
Now, the youth previously have seen, they have been, uh, uh, they been used as uh, instruments of war and uh, joblessness, poverty and hopelessness has, have made the youth very gullible that they can be used by evil forces of this nation to cause chaos. But uh, over time, I think the youth are also realizing that they have a future and they have a future to protect, they have a life to live. So post 20, 20, 2017 election, I think we have been, as a way of peace, we have been very, very particular in terms of youth engagement, youth involvement, and not just involvement, but uh, ensuring that the youth participate even in, uh, in our decision making and, uh, and uh, laying down our programming and uh, particularly devising uh, strategies that um, make meaning to the youth. So it's not uh, a decision that is made for them to implement, but a decision that they themselves, the strategies, they, 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 coil, them, they coil them and uh, therefore implement them. And this, uh, this all, all, all also has taught us that uh, youth are very creative, very energetic, opportunities uh, once given to them, they can be able to seize them and uh, process them into very meaningful outputs. Towards uh, the general elections that just ended, we had a number of events which were like a series. We started with one Peace Kwamta forum that happened uh, in uh, Rwanda, in Nakuru. And uh, later we came and did other activities, but the main ones, there was a derby that, uh, that was played at uh, Kiondo area in Nakuru. And then after that, there was the main event, the main Peace Kwamta concert, which was preceded by um, a live stream. And we also had uh, a show at the MBCI TV. <laughs> Team called Kumbaya came in not just to make uh, the event colorful and beautiful and the music good, but uh, Kumbaya comes from Rwanda, and Rwanda has also gone through um, some process, a lot of steps towards healing, especially after the genocide. So they know what caused the genocide, and we wanted them to come and tell the Kenyans because sometimes. 
like it is usually said nabi haishimiki nyumbani so sometimes when you use foreigners people who have gone through the same things that we are trying to avoid in this nation uh, people try to uh, to to give them a ear people listen and those are the lessons that we wanted people to come and uh, and get first hand experience directly from kumbaya from rwanda we used to have some fights with kids so i fought with someone just <laughs> and then i beat that boy i really beat him and then i was taken to the office and i was told to go home and bring a parent i thought it's normal and then later the director is telling me to kneel down and apologize to the to the boy i was like we fought it's normal and you chased me i came so i'm sorry no 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 not like that you have to kneel down and say sorry and then i did that but after he say no no i don't feel like you have done it the right way <laughs> and he tells my parent there are some people who should not be touched should not touch some people and I was, I was wondering who are those people that you don't touch or you don't beat or you don't play with in addition to both countries being affected by war the most affected lot is the young people since they are the ones who are often looking to make a living and build themselves the youth are the majority of the population in the world today according to the united nations youth comprises people that are between 15 and 19 years old also known as adolescents and those who are aged between 20 and 24 also referred to as young adults it was therefore essential for wape to devise a way of reaching out to this very crucial population in this bid they sought to put together a curriculum that would be able to empower youths across the board This curriculum, the Porter's Hand, would be able to accommodate youths from all backgrounds into a unified path towards building a better future for themselves. This youth empowerment program has adopted the imagery of the pottery process. This is because the pottery process is very systematic whereby the durability, usability and value of the end product are highly dependent on the integrity of the process employed by the potter. Um one of the things that we did was to do a need analysis because the actually needed a curriculum for the youth. So the first thing was to ask ourselves what is it that uh, the youth out their need so we had to go back to the field officers because they are the ones in the field who are actually in direct contact with these youth so we needed to go back and ask ourselves together with them so we had like a meeting where we sat down for a whole day trying to analyze what are some of the challenges that you are facing when addressing the youth and what are they saying uh their needs so that is what we began by doing so we analyzed we looked at what are these needs that they have and then we asked ourselves how do we try to come and try to look for solutions for these needs so how do we tailor our curriculum to meet their needs that is what we began by asking ourselves today's youth is quite educated uh today's youth is quite enlightened and networked and uh, as i said the, the, the majority of the population in this country is youth now despite having gone to school or educated and enlightened there is a missing link the whole issue of ethics and life skill for the youth is it's a it's a gap and this fails therefore the youth fail to connect with the the using using their the 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 opportunities and the strength that they have they fail to connect to the available opportunities so the curriculum porter's hand came about as a way because we've worked in the field for now over 10 years and these are the gaps we have identified particularly among us the youth so the, the porter's hand youth training curric- curriculum meant to address that gap so that the youth uh f- from whichever vocational background is able to be molded wholesomely so that 
once they are able to spot an opportunity, they can make the best use of that opportunity. The 2022 general election was one that most have termed boring due to the uneventful nature it took. Calm and peace saturated the skies of Kenya all through the voting and tallying processes, and truly, this was a historic moment of change. Even with the rising levels of anxiety as the entire nation awaited the announcement of the presidential results, the majority of Kenyans remained calm and hopeful for a peaceful end to the entire process. However, the only chaos that was witnessed seemed to also have a peculiar nature to it as compared to past incidences. Yeah, with the Kenyan election, uh, if it doesn't occur, you call it a miracle, but you always anticipate some drama. But key to mention is that uh, even in the occurrence of this drama, like uh, what happened during the announcement, the first announcement by the Electoral Commission, is that uh, it's that actually history was almost repeating itself because that's what happened in 2007. A certain kind of scenario, that kind, particular kind of scenario. And uh, all of a sudden the country was on fire. But what we saw this time round, the public kept it cool. It, it's cool. And uh, the issue there was also resolved quite fast. And uh, life continued. And uh, the other processes have also come. And uh, the process, uh, despite having a number feeling it wasn't uh, right, or rather it didn't go our way, the public is healing and ready to move on. Hata inchi za inchi, watu wa inchi walikuwa, yale walikuwa na tazamia ya tatendeka katika Kenya. Kwa vile imejulikana hali yake, haiku tendeka. Kwa hivyo katika historia, ukisikia watu wengi comments nyingi imebadilika hata sisi wenyewe kujionea imebadilika hata area ambayo uh, huwa inasemekana hii hata kukitendeka jambo fulani lazima kuwe na maandamano haikuwezekana kwa sababu ya kitu kimoja watu wameenda wakilani ya kwamba eh, hao wenyewe hata wanapofanya ghasia na kuharibu vi, barabara kuharibu mali hizo mali ni zao hizo barabara ni zao hao ndi wataendelea kuzitumia as the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said, and I quote, it may seem as if the world is falling apart as crises pile up and diseases spreads. But leadership is precisely about finding the seeds of hope and nurturing them into something bigger, end of quote. Way of Peace remains true to its mission to see a healed, reconciled, and transformed Kenyan church and communities walking in unity and inspiring hope to the nations. Through its various programs, the team of dedicated peace workers has continued to create spaces that make it possible for people to be able to get holistic healing and experience true reconciliation with themselves, with each other, and with God. Even now, though it may seem as if all is calm at the national level, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done down at the individual level. Vita sio lazima kuwe na moshi barabarani. Sio lazima kuwe na tear gas. Sio lazima mabunduki zilie kila mahali. In fact, vita yenye iko sasa ni kubwa sana. Sana sana. Kwa sababu vita sasa imetoka kwa, kwa, kwa mabarabara, imerudi kwa mitandao. Na inasikitisha kwa sababu pia inahusu hata, um, hata wa kristo. Hivi sasa hudume ya wape inahitajika jinsi livyo hitajika 007-008. Kwa sababu sasa ukisikiza mitanda wama usome yale watu wanasemezana. Wawe ni wachungaji, wawe ni wa kristo wa kawaida. Na wawe hata ni wale ambao labda hawamini mungu. Vita ya mitandao ni kubwa sana. I think I think we've we've made a lot of strides. This is the first election that we are doing with a lot of major, uh, without major events in terms of violence. It is the first uh, election that has gone through without seeing a lot of violence happening, and we really want to thank God for that. 
We know there are many people who are also not uh, okay. We don't want to assume that uh, the absence of war uh, means peace. There are also people who, during this time, there are people who are grieved, there are people who think the elections are not fair. And, uh, and some people have, have gotten testimonies of people saying they are still um, hurting. But one thing, I thank, one thing I thank God for is that at least we've made a step. Now, the physical war is no more, you see? So the next step that we also need uh, to go to and to have a conversation as a country is now how do we address this, this pain that has grown in many people? Because there are, there, there, there are many people who've harbored things in their hearts. There are many people who still talk bitterly. Though they don't do anything or they don't make any actions, you see, we also need to address such things. We want to focus on the areas that are there first because we know there's always need for healing and reconciliation. As we've gone to the uh, general elections and our results are out, uh, and we see that people are, are also divided because there are those who supported one candidate, the candidate who won. There are others who supported the candidate that did not win and uh, are a bit wounded. So we need to bring them together. We need to continue working towards healing and also reconciliation. But we also need to uh, incorporate more other programs. Debriefing will be very important at this time because debriefing is more on an individual level where you get to help people to share uh, the pain and what maybe they've been bottling up in order for them to be able to receive more healing. And also community development, I think, will be key because we need to make sure that the, our communities are working, our communities are getting what they need to get, the resources that are required in order for them to continue moving forward as a nation and even as communities. People need to get busy to get working so that what has happened there before can be left behind. And so... I think for peace actors, particularly churches and uh, all those who are involved in the healing of this nation, this is not a time to fold arms and say, work is done. I think this is when the work is starting. Because the, there is almost 50% of the population that is deeply wounded, deeply deeply hopeless and so for peace actors this is the time to bring healing to bring hope to bring cohesion between the two factions so that uh, because when the nation is together it's easy to move forward but when divided the pace will be slower or if or even none Kenya, to me talk about me. to the 